This is going to be an issue. Probably going to move it there. All right, close that. Come back to Zoom. You can still hear me. And now you can see me. All right. Yep. I got you now. Crypto Kenzie. Hey, what's going on, man? How you doing? Hey, man. It's all good. Hey, I appreciate you. First and foremost, man, um, thank you so much for doing this and, uh, you know, and chatting with me today. I, I really appreciate it. That's what's up. Oh, no, uh, easy work. Easy work, man. I, I got to, bro. Got to support my people regardless. Anything, anybody I see, Crypto Black, look, I, I'm there. I, I, try, I try my hardest, for real. Yeah, that's what's up. Well, listen, I only going to jump right into it, man. Um, Listen, this has been interesting. I took the time to do some research on you. Mm. And, um, well, let me go through and kind of, uh, and go through my little spiel and, uh, and introduce you first here. And I uh, kind of shout you out a little bit, show you a few of the things that I that I discovered. So, my guest today, a Haitian American, twenty something, grew up in Florida, college degree in accounting, graduated from the University of South Florida, and also worked at one of the top four accounting firms in the world oh yeah yeah before diving into this wonderful world of crypto so cryptocurrency <laughs> so other than yeah so uh other than uh asking you how you doing the one thing that i did want to start this interview off asking you about because i saw this in one of your previous videos and i said i wonder if he gonna remember this are you fucking shit up yet <laughs> Is that, wait a second, how, wait, whoa, 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 how, how old is that video? Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm trying to, I'm, cause I know I, I, I say some crazy, I say some outlandish things sometimes, but I try to keep it like off camera, but how, uh, I'm trying to remember what video that is. I feel like everything you said came from my very first video that I put out. It did. Yes. All right. Cool. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, Mackenzie. Good job, Mackenzie. Hold up. I can't get too close to the mic. Uh, good job. Yes. Yes. I'm. I'm fucking it up. <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, good. Good gracious. My. I. I. Wow. Thank you for pulling that up. Like for real. For real. Um. I. I. I I, I really got to go back to that video, either delete it or keep it up. <laughs> I'm clearly gonna, I'm, I'm clearly gonna keep it up, but yeah, I didn't. I I honestly didn't expect to still be here when I first made that video. I was that was my very first video, and I was like, you know what? You know, it was my first video on YouTube. I actually looked up like my very first video on YouTube, and I was um I was in high school. My sophomore year of high school was the first time I put a video up on YouTube, and I net and then. The second time I put my video up on YouTube was um, sophomore year of college. No, 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 no. Freshman year of community college. And then after that, I never put up a video again. And I'm like, oh my God, what have I been doing this whole time? And so, um, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm fucking it up. Like, I, I'm so happy I stuck around. I'm so happy I stuck around. But thank you so much. Everything you said about me was true. Yes, I am that I am that guy. Um, how am I gonna call you by? Because I see us. Uh, you got your name on here. Is too. Um, what is it? Too rich. Too, 
um, too rich to miss or too miss to rich. Yeah, too I, rich to yeah, too rich to miss. And uh, basically, what that is, that's what that is. Is um, I started that. It originally came from. It comes from two things actually, and this is the first th- time somebody's uh, kind of talked to me about that. Um, it comes with too rich is actually a spin on my name. Uh, I'm actually the second. So, oh, so you're Richard the second. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. I'm actually Richard the second, and to miss is actually a uh it's um it's more of a uh i don't want to use the wrong word but it's more of a dedication to my two children that me and my wife lost oh wow. and, uh, yeah because we've had two miscarriages and uh, wow. uh so we have two well she has two that are obviously mine now um but yeah but we <laughs> yeah but we have uh two that uh that uh that we would have had that didn't make it so so the it, two miss is actually for the kids. So two rich, two miss is actually where that where that all comes from. Wow, that's from the soul. So your name comes from the soul. Hey, I, I, I'm I trying. Can't be, I can't even be mad at that. That's <laughs> like, oh, I'm already crying. I'm like, boy, this bad. Look, I'm, I, I'm over here thinking about, I'm about to talk about money, crypto. You got me over here feeling myself like, dang. Yeah. Too, too rich to miss. That that that's night. Now I know you're gonna be successful. Period. Like you got it in your soul. I, I I do my best, man. Um, because it's and we are gonna talk about money and the whole point of of kind of want to talk about this and doing things with this, man. Especially in crypto, but with overall, I like to talk to real people doing real things. Mm. And you fall into that category because in out here going and doing doing this online thing you know, and doing, and with me, and I, I do voiceover, and I've been trying to dig off into that for a while, and as you, and I'm, as I'm sure you know, you run into uh, <laughs> uh, everybody with a six-figure following is not putting out quality content. No, and, of course uh, not. And a lot of people aren't even, a lot of shills are out here, you know, a lot of people have their own agenda, and they're not even really pushing real pushing things that are actually going to help people. And right. from the standpoint of crypto, I know in my limited experience, cause I got into this market. Ooh, May of 18. Okay. So May of 18 things were, you know, we were starting to kind of, Oh no, you, oh, you know what time it was. Nah, yeah. nah, nah, nah. I knew what time it was, man. It was that time. To, look, um, I, I guess I'll just share like, um, my little story real quick on like how I got in. Yeah. Um, you actually got in at a better price than me. Just, <laughs> to, just, I'm, I'm, I'm being a hundred percent honest with you. So, um, this, um, going back to the story, um, tax accountant at the time in 2017, I was just like working out. I, I was reaching the point, um, cause I was working for PWC at the time and I was reaching the point where I was like is this what I really want to do for the rest of my life? Like I was working ridiculous amounts of overtime, this, this, and that. And it just like, it just, and I was doing it for the past like three years before that. And I was just getting into that cycle of, Oh my God, is this it? Is this all? And I just, and I was looking at my bank account and I'm like, is this it? (laughs) Is this all like, I'm looking at the bank account and then I'm looking at this college debt and I'm like, this ain't, this ain't working out. You know what I'm saying? So I was looking for different ways to make money. I was like, you know, I'm the accountant in the group and you know, I didn't want to go past, I didn't want to go to get my CPA because I realized that I wasn't truly in love with what I was doing and I was looking at it saying, "Oh my god. I'm going to have to put myself in more debt to get this next level of income that I probably may not ever pay off, who knows." So I had to find other ways of income because I have got friends that, you know, they do multiple businesses and whatnot. And I'm like, what am I doing? So I got into like, you know, the very first thing that, you know, when people, they push you on pyramid schemes, they push you on multi-level marketing and, you know, it works for some people and it just doesn't work for other people. You know what I'm saying? But while I was during, while, while I was learning in this multi-level marketing um, somebody in there was like, yo guys, let's just put out all this stuff down real quick. This Bitcoin thing, it's, it's running, bro. Bro, I doubled my money yesterday. I was like, say less, you know, <laughs> say less, say less. And so hold on real quick. Something. All right. All right. All right. Yep. Yeah, yeah. 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 Cause I, cause for some reason I just felt like I was getting a lot of gain. 
and I don't know when I was talking into the mic, it was getting like, uh, or maybe that's just my headphones. But no, I'm, to, I'm with you now. Well, you're good. All right, good. So going back to the story. So um, this guy said, hey, man, I doubled my money yesterday. I'm like, you know what? Say less. And so I got into it. Granted, at that time, when he told us to make coin, and we were like making Coinbase accounts, making Binance accounts, like all in one night. And literally like the next day, Coinbase shut down all account, new accounts. Binance oh. shut down all new accounts. But this was December 16th, 2017. If you go back and look at December 16th, 2017, was literally the top of the market. Mm. Literally when Bitcoin was hitting 20K, that was when I was buying Bitcoin. Oh so, my God. So I've, I've felt it all the way, all the way down. <laughs> But I stuck around with it. Um, so that's why I'm here now, because I told myself, McKenzie, you just lost a lot of money, a lot of money. Because um, I was, at the time, they, um, they allowed you to use your credit card. So I was swiping the credit card. They were like, like anything to double up this money. Because I didn't, I, I'm like, whoa, this money moving fast. Because immediately getting into crypto, I went right into altcoins. Because that was just the first thing everyone said, just go right into altcoins, bro. You got it. It was whatever. I'm like, all right, bet. And money started popping off because that was alt season at that time. So mm -hmm. I got into altcoins at the right time. And I had no clue. Like, what is this? Huh? 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 At the end of the day, I, I, I held everything and I lost a lot of money. So I had to teach myself something really quickly. I was like, you know what? I, I've lost a lot of money. I'm sitting over here with egg in my face. I bought the top of the market. Um, but I'm going to learn why I lost all this money. I'm, I'm, I'm going to put my head down and like, I'm put my head, you know, just like a dog, you know, a dog, you know, puts his tail between his legs and walk off. I'm like, I'm going to do this walk off real quick, but that doesn't mean I'm not paying attention. So throughout the entire year, I stuck with a couple of influencers that were continuing to continue to talk about cryptocurrency. And, you know, I attached to some of the ones that I actually felt that, you know, were being honest and true to me. And long story short, met this one guy, Peter Saddington. Um, he encouraged me to start a YouTube channel because he was on YouTube talking about Bitcoin and he was saying, it's really easy. All you do is just talk about everything you see, like talk about your experiences and your story because no one can ever do your story. Only you can do your story. That's true. <laughs> and so once you see that people are going to latch on to you, attach to you because you have, you know, me, I've got very good personality. I, I hate to brag about it, but I have really good personality. And especially on camera, because I look good, you know. But um, but that's but that was that was my that was my kicker, that was my starter. And ever since I made that first video, it's been a long, steady grind to the to today. So and I'm here today on the podcast, too rich to miss with Richard. So what's going on, y'all? Oh man, yeah, the, uh, that phenomenal story. I mean, when I got in here, I got in on the mining side, because I like hardware. So mm -hmm. I said, you know what? So I said, you know, if I can, because I didn't have a lot of extra cash at the time to, you know, to float around. Um, cause that, cause the other kids that I have here, children now, one, we were home, we were homeschooling both of them. One, we ended up putting in a private school. So it was a lot financially going on. Right. And uh, so I didn't have that. So I said, but I saw the mining part of it. And I said, well, okay, well I can, I, you know, I got some computers around here, you know, let me strip some things out and throw some things together, not realizing, you know, what it really, really took. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I have a whole um, group of friends um, from that initial um, YouTuber that got us all together. Um, I got a group of friends. They have their own discord and everything. Yeah. And anytime one of my friends like, man, are you into mining and everything? I'm like, go to that group. Go into there. Cause what they talk about in there is 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 is, is another language to me. But <laughs> they they, <laughs> they talk about some other language down there. But they in there, and and they're, they're just you know building their minds, building their GPU minds, building their ASIC minds, and everything. So yeah, you were it, you were trying to get an ASIC mind. I wanted to get into that, and like I said, I kind of as I dug off into it, I realized from the electricity standpoint, you know, for the light bill and logistically speaking. Uh, it was not going to work out. Uh, so I kind of, I had to kind of fall back for a minute, you know, and I just kind of watched and watched and watched. I watched this thing go all the way down to 35. 
Mm. And I said, you know what? And at the time when it went to 35, I remember because I had an extra 3,500 that the wife didn't know about at the time. Hey. I said, I should just go in and buy Bitcoin right now. Just wait. Just, just, to think. Own, just, just get one. That's right. It. Yeah, just, just one. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I was, I was going to hold one. on. That's all you, just get one. Right. That's the and, goal. That's the goal. Yeah. And I was like, I should just go in and just get it. And I was in paralysis analysis. Analysis paralysis, a better way to put it. Analysis paralysis kicked in, man, and I just waited and waited and didn't do nothing with it. And then it got to 7,000, then I finally got back in. And uh, and I was yep, like, yep. I said, you know what? I know this thing is going. Let's really dig in and let's really go off all crypto. Uh, because even though I'm not an, a, an accountant or anything, I've I've always dug a lot off into finances. And uh, I've done enough to I've done enough to mess it up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all? You know, so you know, so yeah. Shout out to the IRS. Um, you know, but uh, <laughs> yeah, the, the Alphabet Boys. The, oh right? yes, Lord. So I did enough to mess it up. Um, but I've always wanted. Um, I've always known the importance of investing. You know, because I've done some good things in the stock market early. I did a lot of good things with four hundred one ks and all of that, and. You know, so I understand. So I say, you know what? I'm gonna get in here. I'm gonna really invest in this stuff, and I'm gonna really, I'm gonna really fuck with it. So I really started to fuck with it, and up to now, even not knowing what I should know, I've still managed to forex what I've done. Yes. You yes. know. Yes. So I'm forex up though so far, and I don't trade. And that was no, one of the things I was going to. You don't have to. You don't have to. You really don't. Especially yeah, so you, you're not a trader. No, no, I'm not. I, I, I promise. When I, I talk about trading, but I'm not trading. All I'm doing, and this is, I want people to really understand this when I say, because um, it may look like I'm trading, but it's not. I'm researching projects. I'm researching projects and I'm looking at, does this token actually have value? Like, what, how does this token make me money other than just holding on to it, holding on into it, holding on to it and hoping somebody else buys it and it pops up in price. And there's a lot of innovation happening in this space right now. A lot of it's really confusing and a lot of it's really just a bunch of games. And, so, and when I say a bunch of games, I mean, these, these developers, people who build apps and, and all these other things, they playing games with a lot of these, a lot of these cryptocurrencies and you, you, you probably might get caught up in it, but if you're just holding Bitcoin and holding it for all its fundamental values, it's unable to be um, confiscated by the feds. It's, you know, decentralized money. It's money that's not controlled by any government. Each government can come in and say, oh, we created Bitcoin, but we all know the truth. Like you can't stop, you, they can't control it. They honestly, every time the U.S. even seizes Bitcoin, they auction it off. That's how Mike Novogratz um, got a lot of his Bitcoin because they auction it off from the Silk Road um, confiscation from all that stuff. Yep. So that's what people don't really understand. All you have to do is just hold on, especially if you don't want to get into the craziness of what these alts doing. If you just hold on to Bitcoin, 4x your return look feeling good mm -hmm. feeling good but go yeah. ahead. this is true i mean and i and granted and full disclosure for the folks out there i do mess around with altcoins as well you know and altcoins was a part of that you know um which and but and that's just because i need the capital you know mm -hmm. i mean i need to build up the capital and because i I look at this hole and this is something else I want to dig into, um, especially from your standpoint, because you're at, you're, you're an accountant. So you actually know modern monetary theory. Yeah. You, oh, you, no, oh, here, here's the crazy thing about it. Yeah. Um, accounting doesn't teach you that stuff, especially not in the, especially not in the colleges. Accounting doesn't teach you that stuff. All mm. that monetary policy, all these things I learned through being in Bitcoin because the oh. original OGs in Bitcoin, they, they, they're all about Keynesian economics. They're all about hard money. It's all about gold. Like, they're, they're, they're all these kind of do the cypherpunks and whatnot. 
and they they literally just sit there and post and tweet about look back when the u.s took everybody's gold and gold skyrocketed right after they took everybody's gold you want them to take your bitcoin watch what happens when they do you know things like that oh look how the uh, federal reserve is printing money do you think printing money is a good thing here's what it causes and then it, and next thing you know, I'm going through all the history of inflation and how all these countries died off because they kept printing money. And I'm like, wait, and we're still doing it? This is still happening today? Like, we didn't learn from our past? And so all of that, sorry, all of that just came up to, oh, okay, now I'm learning real economics. Now I'm learning how this system actually works because they didn't teach this in the schools. Like they didn't teach you like where money comes from, why, why, how, why inflation is so bad, things like that. This is true. I totally agree with you. Um, and I didn't realize that. I mean, I thought from an accounting standpoint that it would be some of the things they talk about. That's, that's good to know. No, they teach you how to look at books. They teach you how to look at um, debits and credits and whatnot, and then they, they push you through. And that's it. Um, granted, I did have to take finance classes, but tell me I learned. Tell me I can remember anything from what they taught me. Tell me, tell me I remember anything from what they taught me in college, and I'd be I'd be lying to you. So it, but me learning th Bitcoin and me learning like true economics, it's like oh. I can regurgitate this, this all the time. Cause I actually know it. I actually like it's stuck in my memory now. So that's, that's the main difference. Um, but when it comes to like, um, just the whole accounting side, my background is in accounting, but what really attached me to Bitcoin was the back end, the, the blockchain part in the sense of, Oh, this is just a ledger because every company has their own ledger. You know what I'm saying? They, and they do their own debits and credits. And if they're public, they got to report to someone. And if they're not, you know, they got to get audited and whatnot. And when somebody said on the accounting aspect, this is what Bitcoin is. It's just a digital ledger that everybody can audit, that it's open to the world, that anybody can see if you understand how to read it. And I'm like, oh, this is a wrap. All right. Yeah. Y'all got my money. Y'all got me. Y'all got my money. <laughs> By miles, y'all got my money. Granted, I was putting too much money too, <laughs> too early, but because <laughs> I remember at, down at the three Ks, bro, that I, down at that three K, I was, I was $10 here, $10, like anything yeah. I can get at that point. Yeah. But at that top, I was 500 thousand let's go let's, let's, let's. Yeah. And then, but but that's the that's um pretty much how it came back from like my accounting background and what made me stick to it oh okay all right that makes sense <laughs> yeah so you were not dcaing dca was not uh... <laughs> guaranteed when i started out was not i was gambling bro I was gambling like I was just I had no clue what I, I thought I was investing I had no clue what I was doing just to be honest <laughs> And you know, the one thing that I do see in this, um, in this, uh, <laughs> in this sector is we don't do enough research on our own. And, uh, and, uh, it opens up a lot of, it opens up a lot of us to the shills yeah. and uh, to the people that are shilling coins. I mean, and, and I even went in, I fell into it initially as well, uh, because especially from an older person, uh, cause you're, you're 20 something, I'm, I'm pushing 50. Hey, and I, I, you, st you still want this big play. You still want it. It man, don't matter how you want it. Got to have it, you know. And it's kind of, and this is the interesting thing. I was talking to one of my older partners, right? Educated brother. And uh, and uh, do you know that he still thinks that our financial system is backed by gold? Nah, bro. Um, he, He's on something. He's on uh, something. They, they just tell me he's on something because he knows – that that we been we been off the gold standard and yeah i know that and this is the thing and and i was like um and i said what you said you know and he was just like no nah. i'm like no and i went and pulled up the chart and showed like, it to like, him <laughs> like bro what are you talking about the nixon <laughs> like don't you remember like here there's documented proof right right you know and i said that to say that now granted thankfully this individual is very frugal mm. so since he's very frugal he's all right but most of us are not frugal like this individual is and most of us are consumers versus 
have a consumer mindset versus a investor mindset. So we do it wrong from the top, from the start. And, and then we have bad expectations. And uh, um, especially in this doggone crazy market, they'll listen to, uh, not to put anybody on blast, but they'll listen to somebody like BitBoy and, uh, <laughs> you know, and they'll <laughs> kick. I mean, I you know I I don't like to do it, but he's known as people will knowingly just put him out there and say he's a pump and dumper. And now, see, see, so now this is the crazy thing, right? Um, now that I'm in like the content creation space, and now that I, I'm growing a little bit, um, it scares me to talk about any con in any project because it's really a good business model for a content creator to just talk about every, everything, every coin, every, this, I, I, I tested this out. I tested that out. And I remember in my, in my last video that I just put out, I was talking about how, when I first got into the space, um, I just saw people yelling at people, especially on crypto Twitter, yelling at different influencers. Cause you know, I'm looking at different YouTube videos. I'm going to their Twitter cause I'm trying to learn about it. And just seeing them argue with other people, you promoted this, you promoted that, whatever, whatever, this, that, you're a scammer, you're a shiller. But at the end of the day, BitBoy, he's taking care of his family. Yep. He's taking care of his kids. I remember a video where he showed, yeah, I'm making 15K just off of YouTube alone. And then taking that 15 a month, mm. 15K a month on YouTube, just by talking about whatever coin that comes up, and it doesn't matter. And the thing is, he could sit there and say, don't buy this thing. Do your research. What? And I could repeat that over and over again. And people will not do it. They True. think, oh, he's just saying that. That's just to protect him. I'm going to throw my money in it. And then boom, now you're a scammer. Now you're a shiller. Now, granted, some people, they push it to the extreme. They, they, it doesn't matter give the audience what they want, but it reaches a point where people don't respect you anymore. They're like, Oh, well, I can't trust what he says. Cause he just don't talk about everything. So it really comes out to that balance of, do you want to, do you want to be known in the bank for that big bank account? Or do you want to be known by the people and be respected? And you have to, you know, be able to manage that. So granted I've, I've learned, I've softened up to the, the shillers, I, Cause I've realized that the same thing's going to happen to me, the bigger I get and the more I talk about stuff that interests me. Well, this is true. And I understand that I agree. And, uh, um, because I mean, and once again, I can't sit there. I'm at the very low end of content creation. And, uh, uh don't, even, don't even say it that way. Just you started now, no, no low end. You started now. That's all it is. Right. But yeah, but I was going to say, but in the midst of starting out, and and to your point about the shillers, I don't, I mean, I can't honestly say what, I can't say that I wouldn't quote unquote shill or promote a coin if a project didn't come, came to me and said, okay, here's $5,000, talk about my project. I mean, I mean, you know what I'm saying? I can't say that. <laughs> you I, know? <laughs> It's like I, I can't say that. I mean, I'm, I'm just, you know, I mean, I'm, how can I go back to my? I can't sit there and let my wife find out somebody offered me five grand to talk about a project, and I said no. no. <laughs> well, well no. you know, honey, I want to be respectful of the community, and I do not want to be known as a shiller. She gonna be like, oh fuck them, Joseph. No. We <laughs> got, we got we rent. Got we <laughs> we got bills. <laughs> Five thousand dollars for a five minute video? If you don't put if get, get, the, fuck the cam get on that goddamn camera. Get in there and turn that shit out and go. <laughs> what the hell? What you yeah. respect? You don't exactly. respect this bank account. Exactly. You know, so I can't so I'm I definitely don't fought them. You know, and I guess and I only said that because I only said him and not to necessarily put the guy on blast because I don't like to do that. Not. You know, um I would prefer honestly to I want my platform to be built on talking to people like yourself that's really doing stuff versus shedding light on people that are actual, that I consider to be bullshitters, you right. know, because I came front, <clears throat> excuse me. I have actually made some money off some of his picks. Yep. 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it happens, especially in a bull market, especially when everything's going up. You you could put your money in anything. Yeah, but. Up. But the one thing that I do want people to know, though, that you mentioned that a lot of people skate over is the research part. Yeah. And uh, a, a lot of us don't take the time to do the research part. And speaking of research, I know I'm kind of kind of bouncing around. I got a whole list of questions that no, I no, wanted no, that no, I no, wanted no, to ask you about because um I, no before, yeah, go. I, granted I do have to go live at eight thirty, so we have a whole another hour. All right, cool. That's yeah, what's up. I, I, yeah, but I got all my stuff ready for that live stream, so we're good. Oh, okay, cool deal. Yeah, because um, cause like I said, and, and once and in the midst of it all, I I like talking to smart people, you know. And then when I and, and when I sat there, I said, this dude is on it, you know. And once again, just looking at your earlier video, and then I caught the video that you did with um, oh man, oh god, I can't think of this guy. Ken. Ken? Blood. It's, I, I, I have a, I got a couple of good interviews recently. Yeah, yeah, because yeah, you did Ken, and that was a good one. And uh, and y'all went through and talked about some very intriguing things and some stuff about the market that I hadn't. That I'm still like, whoa, okay. I mean, and Crypto Blood was on his channel talking to him, and uh, and they were talking about Bitcoin mixers. And yeah, I, Ooh, I, I just, <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm going to cut off. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, but no, because I heard that, and I'm like, I and this is one of those things that I kind of seen it floating around, and I honestly ignored it, you know, because coming from the older crowd, you know, I'm on a capital preservation stat slash build up. <laughs> Right. Right, 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 right. So I mean, so if it if it, if it looks a little, eh, you know, I kind of, I kind of back because this space is very experimental. You know what I'm saying? So mm. I understand exactly how you feel. You know, but uh, but they were talking about mixers, and I'm like, oh, okay. So this is a thing. You know, I yeah, mean, yeah, and I'm yeah. I'm always learning something new about it, and um, and just like I said, it's very experimental. Um, but. What are your thoughts on DeFi? Okay, so we're we going to go. So for people who don't know what DeFi is first, whew, this is just a can of worms. Mm -hmm. First thing I always tell people, understand what Bitcoin is first. Once you understand that core of what Bitcoin is and what it provides, then you can go into decentralized finance. So right now in the crypto space, decentralized finance or open finance is essentially um you taking your cryptocurrency what people used to do was just hold on to a cryptocurrency and wait for people to just buy it and go up now you know what developers came up and say you know what here's some code here's some stuff here's the logic um we can create exactly what's in the regular financial system without people or a very, very, very minimal amount of people to operate this thing. And so now they've built lending platforms, think derivative platforms, all these different things where you don't have to go through like an investment banker or a, or a Schwab or something. You can literally take the coins out of your wallet, put it into a program, because that's what you're doing, or a protocol or an app, and just letting the app do what it's supposed to do. And these apps are coded to do, you know, trade it this way. I'm not really trading it, but it accrues interest by lending it here or borrowing it there or these kinds of different things. That is what DeFi is. It's essentially any financial product that you can find in traditional finance, you're going to find in DeFi eventually. Right now, it's all the experimental phases of, well, can we recreate this? Can we recreate that? Does it work? But, and the reason why they do it is because we need a way to be able to invest and do more with our crypto without having a central party controlling us or like a Coinbase or like any, any of the others, like regulators stopping us from doing it. So that's right. what DeFi. Now, my thoughts on it, it's... <laughs> It's mind blowing what's happening. Um, I, I personally, me, I've never seen anything like it. It's actually taught me 
a whole plethora of different financial instruments that are in the traditional finance system that I never knew about. I'm like, oh, so this DeFi product is supposed to replicate um, interest bearing loans and this, this and that. And I'm like, oh, and this DeFi product, now you can tokenize your house and then you can own shares of your house and this and it's, and some things are like completely brand new. Like think about that, people owning shares of your home and they get the revenue from the share of your home. I'm like, whoa, something like that's never happened. Mm-hmm. Or at least there's no financial product in the main world that is in this world. So not only do we are we copying old financial products, but now we're building brand new ones in this whole new world. And the good part about that as well, once this part, once DeFi really expands, agree with everything that you said. That was a great explanation, by the way. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I would, you know, and uh, the the thing that I like about it, man, is it's going to open up the door for a lot of well, I'm gonna just say a lot of us black people to be to go in and get money and loans, and it also gives us the benefit of being able to take advantage of the fees that we can get for lending out our crypto versus now. In traditional finance, when we put our money in the bank and banks are doing fractionalized fractionalized lending, we get no parts of that. No. I mean, all we get is a point zero, zero something oh. for a savings account rate, you know. So and let's, no, let's get you to the bigger account rate that gets you three percent more. Yeah, you have to put ten k in it minimum. Yeah, uh, and I'm, right. Right. And DeFi puts all of that on his head. And it's, I like it. I'm with you. I'm especially coming from somebody who used to service mortgages, you know, and who was working in the bankruptcy part of mortgages and who kind of seen how that all fell apart, Mm -hmm. you know, and working with, you know, all of the other sides, the default and the real estate owned and seeing how this whole process worked and owning a home myself and, I'm like, this whole DeFi thing is is huge. It can be very huge. But I always caution people when I'm talking about it on my, pl- when I talk about it, be careful because it's it's great. And these APY numbers will make you think, oh, why have I not been doing this? But then if you get the wrong, if you get into doggone into a food coin, hot dog or yam or pizza or yeah. whatever 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 see that then that, that it goes back to where i was saying it's a playground for developers it it's is a, it's a playground if you know how to code ethereum and i actually have a coworker. he's he's like my ethereum like i go to him like what does this contract say and you know what i'm saying i don't really what i don't understand i can't read this oh so this is what this is supposed to do and i'm like oh thank god bro i'm not putting my money in there but they they this is what they're doing and to just to just to give the word of caution like for real do do everybody remember all the websites that came out back in the two like the 1990s all the different websites like this website that webs see a lot of people my age because i'm in my late 20s now i don't remember all of the websites but i remember some of them because we were really just folk like my age was just really focused on the social media but we had most like do it.com and the next thing you know, do it.com IPO on the stock market because they had a website (laughs) and that's it. And that's it. And so what's happening right now in the crypto space is the same thing. I'm glad you said that. I'm glad you said that because I, I I compare this market to, I compare the crypto market now to the way the internet was back in the dial up days, just what you're talking about. It was it's a lot slow sometimes it's, it, it's, you, you know, you're, you're doing multiple clicks to get to do something when regular websites, all you need to do is one click or two clicks. You got, you have to know what you're doing. You got to have a meta mask. You got to have this, you got to have that. You got to under like, it's going to reach a point where all that stuff is going to phase out. All you're going to need is to have one wallet, one thing, one that, but for the us, for the for the for people who've been here for a while, nah, we're gonna keep using the original ways because we're gonna understand all that one click stuff. 
you're giving up a lot of power to get that convenience. That's, and people don't understand that when something gets very easy to use, just remember what you're giving up for it. Exactly. And that is also another point. Oh, I about to say the camera even agrees. But I was be kicking it on accident and I'm like, hey, nah, don't don't fall, bitch. Look, I ain't trying to go through all that. I, I, had, I had to figure it out. Yeah, I know, right? I was like, whoa, the camera's even in agreement. That was some real shit right there. <laughs> Yes, Lord. I knew I was, I knew I was supposed to be talking about this. I knew it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um. But yeah. And uh. <laughs> yeah. Um. <laughs> I, I lost my train of thought. But um. But but no. But I I definitely uh. It, it's it's amazing what could really happen right now. And uh. Oh yeah. The, the size of the market. Um. Because it's it's slow and clunky right now as far as the industry overall, but it's just like you said, by the time people, by the time it gets to what you're speaking about, a lot of the value is going to already be sucked out too. Oh yeah. Oh, it, you know, so I tell people now, you know, um, the only real color that matters is green. Mm. The reason why I say that is because think about this. How many people that you know that are financially secure for real, are they really worried about who hates them because they're black or white? Well, let's just talk about black people. How many well-off black people you know thinking about um, the white man holding them down and, and, and Trump did this and, and we are need Biden for that? Are you kidding? Trump is helping them. Are you yes. Kidding? Do you yes, know Lord. the tax rates Trump is putting down for these LLCs and companies and whatnot? Come, please. The richer you are, the better it is right now for you. That's a fact. The richer you are, it is amazing for you. This is why Republicans are usually more wealthy people because um, the, I guess the Republican mindset, throughout all that, just throw all that racism out the way and just look at like the fundamentals of like what the Republican party wants. It's to empower the um, economy, specifically the U S economy and empower us first, then do all that. While the more de democratic party, it's not really about that. It's more like money for everybody and bringing it into, it's like, it's almost like contrast in a sense, but um, just going back to that, the whole wealthy person, the wealthy person, ain't, they're not looking at what Trump, they're not even paying attention to what this stuff is, because they understand all this, like, and this is me just being conspiracy theory, all this stuff is just the, the whole election, blah, all that stuff is whatever. All that matters, what's the Fed doing? Yeah. That's, that's all that matters, like, and every time, what's the Fed doing? Who, and this is the explanation I give every time and I sometimes I feel like I'm wrong when I say it um when you're in a household and you know usually I get the I, I get a certain answer we're talking to married men so I, I already know what's gonna come <laughs> um in a household who makes the decisions the person that makes more money or the person that you know is in the house and usually decisions are supposed to be made together but if you make all the money essentially you have more power and so if we look at the people who have the money in the government, they're the ones that are really controlling everything that's going on. But this yeah, is, like absolutely. I said, this is just me being conspiracy and trying to relate money to marriage, which never works out. That's why I'm single now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, <clears throat> this is true. Um, I, but it, it, but it is, it's not necessarily a, a conspiracy theory, though, if you really think about it. Um, because lobbyists are essentially people that are paid to be in Washington to help to push corporation con ideas, convince <laughs> people of their ideas, you yeah. know. So it's kind of like, for example, you know, and just to go along with this point, let's look at Coinbase, mm. the Coinbase CEO, he's real cool with which CEO, I know you know. But, oh, but um, Coinbase CEO, he's cool. See, the thing is, um, he's cool with a lot of people, but he's been going through a, some stuff right now. All I remember is with the Coinbase CEO, 
um, his CFO um, is part of is, is on the board of the Fed now. Get um, out. Yeah, Brian Brooks. So Brian Brooks used to be the CFO of Coinbase, and now he's um, head he's head attorney something general at the Fed. He's like wow. the number two seat. He's the number two seat under that's, whoever. That's deep because I was thinking because I was going to talk about he's uh, cool with uh, Jamie Dimon. Oh, man, Jamie, Jamie, the Dino Diamond. Yeah, they already knew what time it was. They realized Coinbase is the new wave. It's the new like they already realized that all these Internet banks. And I was just talking about this with my coworker. Um, she's 50 and she was just like, why are these banks even here? Like, I, I don't know the last time I had to go to a bank. And I'm like, oh, it's just for old people. You know that, right? Like, <laughs> it's just for old people because all the rest of us, we have apps. Like, all our stuff is on apps. Like, I don't ever have to go inside a bank. Only, like, let's just be honest, only time I get cash, because no one really has cash, the only time I get cash is if I want to buy, mm-hmm. you know, you know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, this is, that's it. That's mm-hmm. it. Like, that's yeah. the only time I would ever have cash. But Same. everything else mm-hmm. is digital all digital all digital um sorry i i completely lost track of where i was going um back banks back jamie dino diamond yeah um go is it gold no not goldman sachs who's the goldman sachs guy i'm a i'm gonna forget that but jamie diamond he's the jp morgan jp morgan and the jp morgan quorum and their whole quorum blockchain that they were trying to push that they realized was going to fail because Ethereum's here and there's nothing they can do about it. Um, yeah, they're 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 in the, they're in, they're all all of them know each other, all of mm-hmm. them collabing with each other. Um, I believe Jamie's using um, he's um, what is it custodianship? That's what it is. Jamie's doing the custodianship for Coinbase's um, custodian services. So now they're mixing the old with the new mm-hmm. so that because because the old still need a hand in this space because mm-hmm. they realize that this space isn't really built for a conglomerate thing. It's built to be decentralized, just like how you're seeing right now with Uniswap and Coinbase. Uniswap's doing more volume than the Coinbase right now. It is. Unis- this, you, you know, Uniswap's only like a year, two years, like a year old. Yeah. And it's doing more volume than the Coinbase that's been around since like what 2014? Yep. And you know, man, and here's the thing with that. I and I'm a I like Uniswap. I'm a fan. And but a lot of people aren't going to use it. I know, especially with newer people, because it's all of those parts. You got to go through some clicks. You got to set up your MetaMask, you know, and if you and hadn't then- and then yep. when you show, and then when you show somebody, you flip ten thousand dollars to twenty thousand dollars in a day. They gonna get the MetaMask. They gonna <laughs> do. They gonna do like I guarantee. That's what's going to happen. Like I'm already predicting it. Think about it. Like that is what people like. I know people that are in crypto right now that have been in crypto with me, and that recently just got a MetaMask. Wow. Just got a MetaMask. Just started using. What in the world? Yeah, that's what I was about to say. <laughs> oh, I got the, I got, bro, they, they watching me already. Oh, they-, <laughs> they watching me. It's the Russian. <laughs> the Russian's coming for me. What's um, it? Yeah, so, oh, look, 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 we we said they're trying to. We said they are uh, getting. We said they're getting revelations about what's going on and and, and about the the some in. cuts. They're like, hold on, man, hell, no, wait a minute, nah, y'all putting too much. It's too much. Mm-hmm, hold mm-hmm. it. Y'all talking? Wait, no, no. They know this. A don't talk too heavy. Dump it. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen that meme. Dump it, <laughs> <laughs> bro. That, that's that's like nah, hey. The black people know. Oh, no, nah, we nah, sell it, sell it. We can't let the black people win. <laughs> but you know, it's a trip though. But I think about that because, and the reason why I was making that contrast is because, um, that Coinbase CEO and Jamie Dimon were, reports side that they've been having private meetings before the public even knew about it. And this is also just so happened to be the same company that owned that boat that had all that cocaine, of course. Hey, you know, man. it and then they were also a part of that a part of the banks that were uh, that were noted in that uh, money laundering thing. Oh, yeah. When the it, truth comes out and you know what happened to them? Nothing. nothing. And that's what, and I said that. 
because it's part of business. Because yep. it's part of their, they are like, how, how, you really think these drug lords are laundering money and they not coming? Like, do you know all the, like these investment bank? Oh yeah, I work at Wells Fargo. I'm an investment. How do you own a Porsche? What kind of investment banking do you do? Mm-hmm. And, and I, every time I see that, I'm like, Oh, you just you just bought a house in the islands? Oh yeah, you 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 running that? You running that money for Wells Fargo? You run it because that's what it is. Mm-hmm. And they're not, told, they're not told to look the blind eye, but to them it's just someone's account, and this is how it's just done. Yep, and that's what's happening, bro. Yep, and the thing that as yeah, true. I'm with you, and and I and in a, and to add on to that, this is why right now. I definitely commend what the Coinbase CEO is doing. Now, granted, I'm not a Coinbase fan. Don't use Coinbase and all of that. But I understand the game. Coinbase is going to be one of the major players going forward in this whole space. Coinbank, the new Bank of America. But, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Now, if uh, now what I and real talk, what some of the if some of these other people in these major exchanges, what they should be doing is they should be having a lobbying group of their own in Washington right now. Oh, they, 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 they got to be there. They, they, I, I hope so. Got, oh, no, they're, they're already there. You have to think about recently, Kraken just got a banking charter. That's they're true. a bank. <laughs> they're a bank now. You, mm-hmm. you, th- you think this happened? No, nah, they had to grease some pockets. They, oh, got a, they, they had to grease some pockets, get some lobbyists to go through, make push some things through. But do we vote on these things? Like, uh, who who voted on that? Cracking could be a bank. Like, mm. oh, that, that that this must be a whole different department. My fault. My fault. This this must be a whole different thing. Um, what happened? Like, what 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 happened with these backdoor meetings? Oh, non disclosure agreements. This is that, that's good. But technically, this is insider trading. Non disclosure agreements. This is legal over here. Mm-hmm. Man, I don't. Uh, at, now, bro, being in crypto it shows you the truth of everything else. And it's frightening to see because when you get into Bitcoin, you understand what money is. And then once you understand what money is, then you understand what banking is. And then you start seeing the people, look what this is doing. Look what that is doing. Look what this company is doing. It's like, well, damn, like no one, no one asked me that they could do this. No, no, I never knew nothing about this. Mm-hmm. That's what's going on in right now. And and I love seeing it because when you're in crypto, the you you're you're open to everything. You see everything else and it's beautiful. It, it definitely is. And I'm definitely gonna be on the side of and I enjoy what you do, man. You know, I mean I do enjoy the channel and I, I like what all of us are doing out here with the brothers in crypto as I as I like to call us. You know, between you, Crypto Blood, um, Bitcoin Zay, the gentleman of yeah. crypto, yeah, uh, them cats, um, Bitcoin vegan, cool dude, yeah. talk to him. Um, you know, real people doing real things, and I just don't want it to be a space where a lot of us fall short and come late to the party. You know, but, be- but that's gonna happen. That well, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, true. That's that's think about this. Look how easy it was for you to find me. How many other black people can we talk about? The same names you said are the same names I know. Yeah, yeah. It's just, it's going to, unfortunately, I can't just be a black guy in crypto. I have to be a symbol. I have to, I have to show people like, this is how it's done. Because it's just like, I now I've realized I'm going to have a responsibility to share this with my people. Like, because I don't see no other black people like that. It's just only a handful of us, just like every other industry. There's only a handful of black people. And so I'm like, you know what? Now I'm going to get my foot in. I'm going to get in here. I'm going to get dirty. I'm going to lose some money. I'm going to make some money. But all these experiences, check down the list. Check down the list. Check. Look how long I've been here. Look how long I've been doing this. Look how, money I've, look how much money I've lost. And I was like, you know what? Ah, we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going. And we're going to keep going. And I remember... Um, I remember last year, I remember last year I was looking at it. I was looking at like, you know, the numbers and the balances. And I was telling myself, man, I'll never get to one Bitcoin. I'll never make back what I made. Looking back this year, I'm like, Lord. Well, <laughs> I had I never expected this kind of return, like never, bro. And it just made me like 
yeah, but you've been you've been you've been taking it slow for too long, McKenzie. It's time to take it's time to kick it up a notch. But you know, a little bit of money makes you a little bit more confident in what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. So definitely a thing. But go ahead. Oh, oh, absolutely. I mean, no, I'm in total agreement with everything that you're talking about. Um, because you you're right. You're right. Uh, but let me kind of spe- let me go through a couple other things here. Um, uh, num- something else you said, uh, and you said obviously a lot of cool things um, in the midst of your videos. <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna put a pause in front of this up front before I even ask this question, but Go I'm ahead. quoting you here. Go ahead. How do you make crypto sexy as fuck? <laughs> what, what am I talking? What am I saying? No, I gotta do that. I gotta do that. No, but how do you, how do you make crypto sexy as fuck? Because- I mean, it was it was such a cool statement, man. Because when you said it, I was like, you know what? This dude is motivated, and you're still out here. I'm still, still, still out here doing. But you have to understand, um, especially for um, our culture, our culture, we're 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 so pop culture. Where it's all about anything that we do is hot. You know what I'm saying? We're plastered on the billboards. You know, we come up with the trends. How do we make Bitcoin and cryptocurrency a trend, a sexy thing? How do we make this shit sexy to black people? Like, ooh, hey, I, I got owe me some of this crypto. I we we got all these rappers, we got all these dudes talking about how much bread I got. I flex and I'm buying this, I'm buying that, I'm 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 this, I'm that. How do we get them to say, yeah, man, look at look at all this crypto I got. Look at all my what you you you're not on Uniswap. How do we do that? How do we flip the narrative? Because I know for a fact they, I know for a fact we got a lot of, I would say, um, influential people in the in the black space that are here. They're in the crypto space, but like like Jay Z and them. Like speaking of, fifty, 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 Ben, fifty. Uh, what was what album was that? He was, he was, you, you could buy a whole album with Bitcoin at one time. Yeah, that was the um oh God, man. I just did a I just did something on that doggone thing. Um gracious. I can't think of it right now, but he sold the album. He was taking Bitcoin for the album, and then the Bitcoin that he had then oh, there we go again. <laughs> then the Bitcoin that he had then is it equal to like five million dollars now, something like that? Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm sitting there like he doesn't talk long, about debt. How long? How long he's been in the game? You know what I'm saying? Like these, all these dudes are in the game, but they hush hush about it. They'll talk about it once, but they hush. They cool. They whatever. They mm, mm, whatever. And you know, and that's that's the thing too. And that's our that's one of our problems. You know, as I was being too hush hush about stuff that we really can be to speak to each other, and get each other game on. And know, uh, I was talking to a brother. Um, educated brother with a college degree, right? He went to holler at some of his other partners who were educated with degrees in big companies and without naming companies because they know what I'm talking about. So one guy who already has a degree and has been working in his field for up to umpteen years, hollers at another guy because he's in a high position at said company to say, hey, I want to come over there and work for y'all doing what I do. Why these people can't have a conversation? He reaches out to one, and they suddenly don't respond to the phone call. Mm. And, I mean, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, I'm currently doing this over here for a well-known company that if I named you would all know. You're working for another company I'm trying to do the same thing. Just, you know, I ain't even trying to get you to bring me in. Just, you know, bring my resume. Yeah. yeah just, just, man, you, know, you know how this works. It's about who you know. It's not about what you know. You, exactly. you have to know, you know, you got the resume, you look good, whatever. But it's all about the networking that you've done. It's who exactly. you know. And granted, and this happens in other companies all the time. Even mm-hmm. the company I'm at, you know, family, higher family, friends like this. So when you see another black person say, hey, man, I'm trying to come over to y'all, y'all side. Look like y'all paying. I'm trying, you know, I'm not trying to take your job. I got a whole department I could get to. 
why why can't we do why do we feel like we sh- we we shouldn't help each other that way because that's mm-hmm. what every other culture does true true well, and so yeah and so i i don't understand why why the situation i don't understand why we we don't want to pick each other up it's almost like crab mentality you see somebody increasing and increasing and so what you do is you grab onto him but you don't realize you're pulling him down you're not pulling him up mm-hmm. you're not helping him up and I, I just don't understand why as us as a community we do that to each other and you you know you see your friend out there you trying to reach out to you to help and you you won't help him but you're already in a position to help him so exactly. I, that, that's just that stuff like that i don't i don't, I don't mess with i don't, i'm I, I try to put out as much good content as i can to make sure that you know you can absorb it the way you can, and if you if you make money off of it, that's amazing. If you don't, do some more research. But at least I'm trying to help. You know, exactly. Granted, I'm making some money in the back end. You know, this is like this whole YouTube thing. It's a business. Let's just be real. Oh yeah, absolutely. But I, you know, we, we, I'm I'm going running on a tangent. I already feel like I'm about to run on a whole tangent. But I I don't understand why our culture is like that at all. It doesn't make sense. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, and I guess and in the midst of all of that, we're running up on an hour here. And I definitely appreciate all your time, man. And I'm a definitely. Oh, no, no, we just, we just, I got up all, got all, you could ask anything, bro. I got up to 830. Oh, that's what's up. Because, shoot, because I'm sitting there thinking about it. And um, and just kind of going over everything is really interesting. I have like 15 questions over here. You know, we done talked about everything. Oh, I didn't <laughs> we, oh, bro, you we made did. me like, but no, just to just to pull, all right. So we can. I I, I want to talk to you about something then. Um, oh yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So Serena, well, Serena, Serena Williams, mm. um, her investment company, her her venture capital fund, um, was invested in Coinbase, and yeah, her her venture capital fund was invested in Coinbase, and recently she just um because you know when you when you have those funds they have to openly report um when they invest and whatnot. They recently just reported that they're no longer invested in Coinbase. How do you feel about that? And what what makes you think that it ha- why she did that? Hmm. Uh well, I guess my con- uh if okay, well, I'm gonna do the politically correct dance and then I go down the conspiracy route. <laughs> okay, okay. The politically correct thing that I would say is is perhaps, you know, she's managing her risk and she, you know, and there was some uh, fiduciary reason why she wanted to get out of that particular position. Okay. Now, the, the, now the conspiracy side of me would say, uh, you know, um, I'm not really a fan of Coinbase. You know, um, I personally think that, they're, that the government, it, that they're in the government's pocket. Oh, of course, they, they have to be. And, you know, I mean, so I definitely think that there's a lot going on there that us regular people might not find out about until after something actually happens. And people that are that have big amounts of money and then she's married to what's that guy? Uh, Reddit. Reddit yeah. CEO. Yeah. So she's married to somebody who I'm sure knows some people that know some people that know some people. Yeah. Uh, the conspiracy side of me says her husband, one of her husband's friends, hipped him to some game, and and he went to his wife, as we do for the women that we love, and yeah. say, you know what, baby, um, nah, I, this, uh, ain't it. this ain't it. That you know that that coin based thing, uh, you know, yeah, we you might scratch that. We don't yeah. scratch that. Yeah, that, that's that's my thing. And, and obviously, once again, the conspiracy side of it, nobody can prove that or nothing like that. But honestly, that's kind of my thought, man, because I and that the only reason I tell people to use Coinbase is to is just in. as an off ramp. Yeah, off ramp to get in and out. That's it. That's if you want to go in and out. So once you realize you can get in and you don't have to leave. That's when things get crazy. When you start realizing, oh, there's these, these these stable coins. So they just act like real US dollars. They're just not. And I can still use them on the internet, but I just can't use them in real life yet. Because we just realized China just did their whole um, US, their, their digital currency test and all these CBDCs. Like, 
I, I personally believe USDC is the Fed coin. It's already here. Mm. They're going to reveal it and they're going to be like, no, this is the US digital dollar. It's already here. Mm. That's what I really believe is going to happen. But yep. um, to, go to answer my question, and I'm going to give the political and the, and the conspiracy. Yeah. Um, political, I think the whole DeFi movement is really opening people's eyes to what a centralized exchange, what, what value can really come out of that. Because once people realize, because just like how we just said, Uniswap's doing more value than Coinbase. If Coinbase is supposed to be this new decentralized, like, you know, it's not supposed to decentralize the banking system, but it's supposed to bring cryptocurrency in this new aspect to the banking system. Don't you think the decentralized exchanges are going to disrupt their whole process immediately already? They're the, like, think about it. If DeFi is supposed to be like this whole new thing and the next wave of financial future, don't you think the very first thing it's going to destroy are the, the, the on-ramps that mimic the old financial system? So that's, that's my, you know, political answer that their team is getting wise and they're realizing they don't need the coin. They need to, they need to fundraise and, 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 and Uniswap. They need a piece of Uniswap. They need a piece of this. They they don't need a piece of Coinbase. They need a piece of that. That's where the political answer. My conspiracy answer now is everything that went down with Coinbase about a week and a half ago, like two weeks ago, where they came out with a statement saying, oh, Coinbase is a place for um, people to, we're building the money of the future, but we don't want to get caught up in the politics of everything that's happening right now. Mm. and the, you know they brought up the whole george floyd and this this and that and you know like we we're not going to take a stance on these things and if anybody who wants to you know who doesn't agree we we definitely can get you in a place where you can um feel right or in a sense um we're gonna let you go and find you, you go work for somebody else if you don't mess with our stance of not getting into this and everyone just looked at them. Wait, you're supposed to build your you got your your mission statement is to build this new financial system for everyone. And yet you guys are saying, Oh, we're not gonna take a stance for what all this stuff that's going on, you know. This this you know, the money of this doesn't mix with politics right. But you still but wait, you, you have to get through the politics to get all the stuff that you get done. Your 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 former CFO is now in politics mm-hmm. how do you think all you how do you think all the licenses you get it's all politics but the moment when it's time to stand up for people or a certain class of people well we don't want to get into the politics mm-hmm. i think that is my conspiracy like oh that's how this company feels and i think sierra uh, sierra Williams, she she knows like i she got money i don't need your money if that's how you feel that's how, that's the kind of money she got Oh, that's how your business operates? We don't need that kind of money. Trust me, we're good. We'll go put this to somewhere else. That's my conspiracy version. Well, you know, I'm definitely down. I I hope that that's the right one. (laughs) I mean, but no, but I really, because Reddit, I don't know if you realize the app, but the Reddit app, it's supposed to be like this red, like kind of orange looking thing. And the Reddit app, it's, it's been black ever since this all started. It's just been, they, they've changed. Yeah, it's been black this whole time. You know, I noticed like that, but I never put two and two together. You know, yeah, you're right. Yeah, because why would it be black? Like, they're, they're like, think about it. Their color is a specific, like, that. Like, it's always been that. The moment all this started, black. And I'm like, see, I'm not even mad at interracial couples no more. Go ahead. Because now you, gotta, you got this white man. I mean, granted, we don't need it. We don't, you know what I'm saying? We don't need the white man to defend us. But mm-hmm. now we got this white man who's like, nah, nah, I got black children. What the fuck are you talking about? Because mm-hmm. now they're looking at it like, no, 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 no. They take, they take light-skinned boys. They take this. They take all their lives. It, as long as they're just, it's, it's black, light-skinned black, dark-skinned black, Hispanic black, doesn't matter. They see them all the same way. Now you're like, oh, I got black children. I got this whole app. Nah, bro, we making a stance. We're making a stance. 
And so that's what that's what I like. So that's why I'd be like, I'm a, I ain't even mad at the interracial couples. Look, black queens, go get you one because black men been doing it forever. <laughs> Uh, this is true. Th- this yeah, black is men, <laughs> black men been doing it forever. So black queens, go get you, go get you a white man. By all <laughs> means. Yeah, yeah. This is true. I mean, and because at the end of the day, is that the the race thing? The more I think about it, it it matters because we have to deal with it. But I really just don't feel like it's the ultimate issue that we, the biggest issue that we should be dealing with. No, the biggest it, issue is the money. The, absolutely. Just the money. Absolutely. It's always, it's always been the money. Absolutely, and you know, and and when I think about this Coinbase thing, you know, um, and just with crypto in general, if you look at it, I believe, and and just kind of looking at what uh, the micro strategy guy did. Mm-hmm. Do you know? I, did you see the interview where he said that he was? trading in he had so many people trading in the market side by side with us normal people so to not push the price up and bought mm-hmm. almost half a billion dollars almost half bought half a million dollars almost in mm-hmm. bitcoin now when i heard that i said thought about that i said now wait a minute he was in the market for god knows how long and then after he got it all, then he said, oh, I got it. I'm thinking, how many other CEOs are doing that? You know oh, what I'm he, saying? He just, he just, I think he, he, he paid, he showed people how it can be done. Right. Like, this is how, and now, because here's the thing, um, a company, a, a big company like that, they don't have to go to no exchange and what, they don't have to do that. They can go to over the counter, not on the books, completely in the back. That's where they can get it from. And they can get it for there for cheaper and whatnot. He could have easily did that, but he didn't. There's a reason. Either that well is drying up and he just doesn't got the pull to do it no more. Because it's like, nah, bro, you keep, how much you trying to get? We can't find nobody that can give you that much right now. Mm-hmm. Not right now. That's what I'm like, oh, because usually the companies like that, they don't, and you know, he said, oh, I didn't want to incur the slippage, so I had so many people do it, mm-hmm. or you, this is the only plan you could come up with, because you couldn't get it off of OTC. Mm-hmm. That's what I think actually happened, and that's where it's like, that's why people are saying, oh, we're at a bottom, guys, because if they forced to do that, then that means more companies are gonna have to be forced to do that because a billion dollars in Bitcoin. Oh, you know what that would do to the price? Jump, jump, yep. bro. But and his, he, yeah, and here's the thing that I that I want to tell you about that too. I'm with you because uh, the two there's two words: supply shock. Yep. Supply shock. I don't think supply Thank shock is kick. Thank you, happening. <laughs> Thank you, bro. I was over here like, man, just having it ain't gonna do nothing to the price, man. Like we, bro, bro I, I keep forgetting how small this space really is, cause it's like everyone's like, oh, the have, bro. I've been listening, I've been talking about the happening since I got into the space. So I'm like, oh, this is the happening. Oh, when it does it happen? Dang, that's a long way from now. 2020. That's like two years. I gotta wait two years for the happening. Mm-hmm. Well, ain't nothing to talk about now, then. But then people are like, oh no, people are gonna front run it by a year. Man, they're not gonna do that. Mm. Year before the happening, price skyrocket. Oh, they weren't playing. But then it drops and it drops and it drops. Then right before the happening, we get that fir- that that firm dump to almost three k, mm-hmm. and it's like, man, this happening ain't gonna do nothing. And then next thing you know, boom, supply shock. Yep. I'm like, oh, oh, they weren't playing. I right, bet. Bet say less because that was my first happening. The recently, and I'm sure it was yours. Mind too. you, yep. And it was like, oh, bet say less. Can't wait for the next one because now, because we have our own economic system, Bitcoin just does what it's supposed to do, and that's it. Look, every four years, or really every certain amount of blocks, which is usually every four years, just mm-hmm. trying to keep it technical. Look, this is how it happens. The inflation schedule gets cut in half. This, this, and that, and there's only going to be so much left. So enjoy. And sometimes I be, t- and people keep saying, "Oh, so is having like a stock split?" 
No, it's Mm -hmm. the exact opposite of Mm -hmm. what a stock split is. It gets even harder to earn. It's getting, oh, bro, oh, we could go on for days. We could go on for days. Yep. And here's what I think, man, and uh, and I guess we'll end it on this one. What this is going to do now, we're going to have another supply shock that us regular retail investors ain't aren't when we realize it it's going to be articles coming out exchanges are going to be running short they the, already are really oh no you, you haven't seen the art you haven't seen the the i love glass note the analytics people yeah. like people are taking their coins off of coinbase like people are taking bitcoin like the amount of bitcoin on exchanges is sharply going down like and that's maybe another reason, because even her series investors are probably seeing the same thing. Oh, people aren't keeping their coins on these things no more. Granted, there's going to be the noobs that are going to do that. But mm-hmm. for us who've been here for a while, we we know what DeFi is. We know, like, we know. I, all I got to do is have something on my wallet, and I can interact with decentralized finance. Hell, I can interact with decentralized finance with Bitcoin. Mm-hmm. I can put Bitcoin on Ethereum. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's a wrap, yeah. bro. It's a wrap. And so, supply shock. Yeah, I'm I'm ready for it. I'm mean, I ain't going nowhere. Oh, oh yes, Lord. I I think you. I think our first quarter of 2021 is gonna be really great, man. I think oh, yeah. we're gonna start that. I mean, everybody's talking about Q4. I honestly think we're gonna just be in a lot of consolidation from now yeah. to the end of the year. I mean, yeah, we're gonna get some pumps and all of that here and there, but I don't think it's gonna really kill it. January next year. It's, I think it's really when it's going to start to go down. Right. Yeah. I, I believe that to myself. Just, just, just because and I think maybe, maybe like December, that's when things are really going to start kicking up again. But the only thing I'm worried about with the first quarter is first quarter. That's when people are usually liquidating because they got to pay taxes. Oh, yeah. yeah, that's true. Because <laughs> they got to pay, because they got to pay taxes. True that. True that. So, true that. Be like, so like right after taxes, right after oh. taxes gone it's time time to time to get greedy again <laughs> <laughs> that's what's up but listen man i appreciate you taking the time out to holler at me today man it's been wonderful i'm gonna cut up and do some clips and have some clips come out um on the channel throughout the week and the whole episode will be on the podcast uh this uh this saturday so man, I, I greatly appreciate it, man. I love to be able to come through and chat with you again sometime. Uh, I wanted to try to do this live on the channel, but man, my Wi-Fi and yeah, bro, it's okay. Look, yo, you saw me with the you saw me with the camera at the beginning. I'm like, all right, what's going on? Why are you not working? Like right before I go live, I gotta figure out whatever that thing was. I'm like, I don't need people seeing Russian letters every five <laughs> seconds. <laughs> I'm just saying, like, the Russian's coming. Like, nah, bro, I got to fix that right before I start. I know that's right. But uh, but before we go and end it off, is there anything you got going on you want to plug or whether you got any courses that you do or consultations? Oh, oh yeah. So um, I don't do courses. I don't do consultations. Um, just mainly because, you know, so many other people do that, and it's great. They can do that. But me, um, I just try to focus on making content and doing that because I've seen other people – they, once you start getting into courses and whatnot, a lot of the cryptocurrency space, they stay, they get really ugly towards you for that, even though that's just a generic. And I'm like, I don't need that. I, I just want, I don't need people to pay me for this free info because everything I've learned in crypto was free. You know what I'm saying? So just the only thing I have to plug, follow me on Twitter at Crypto Kenzie. Follow me on Instagram at Crypto Kenzie. I'll be dropping, I would just be dropping gems. I'll be dropping knowledge. And of course, follow the YouTube channel, um, Crypto Culture. That's where I make all my long videos, all my things, and all my live streams that I'm going to be on right after this. So you're probably, by the time you guys hear this, I would have already recorded it and you guys would have been on it. So go ahead. That's what's up. Appreciate you, Crypto Kenzie, Crypto Culture. I uh, had in my notes the Crypto Accountant. <laughs> let's go talking tax that's right shoot well yeah i pre- i appreciate you man uh i'm gonna go on and end this one and uh and start recording on the stream and i will definitely catch hopefully we'll be able to catch up and uh and speak again on some other things thank you much man all right babe, you have a great day thank you all right